We've got to push out some more Dark Souls Tactica. And up on my playlist, on my channel here under board games, I've got a lot of different ideas and some things that we explore. I really like Dark Souls, not only for the IP, but it, for me, it works. It's got the epic boss fights with the AI. It's got crafting. It's got magic gear. It's got rolling lots of dice. I love the dice, although, well, Mage Knight. Mage Knight does have dice mana dice but mage knight's been growing on me i'm like first time i open up mage knight i'm like where, where are the dice i got i got a defective game no dice what do you mean there's no dice i mean this is like wargamer fritz i gotta roll the dice um so i love the dice in dark souls one of the challenges that we see one of the things that we see with dark souls complaints criticism is that it's it's a dice fest right you need to be able to beat certain armor values because um all the monsters and the bosses they have an armor value so if i hit you for five points of damage but you have a four armor value we subtract that i only do one point of damage so there's this idea that um you have three colors of dice three classifications black dice blue dice and orange dice each one has a higher capacity to do damage so naturally you say okay well the gear i'm going to try and level up my gear that stack more dice roll more dice score more hits but it is swingy i can do well i can do not so well from that perspective and some people kind of dismiss that maybe they're looking for more of a euro dark souls definitely is winner take all because you're grinding these souls, you're getting up there for a boss fight, and even when you're ready, mini boss, main boss, mega boss, even if you're ready and you've got some decent gear, tactically you need to be on top of it. If you fail, and you could fail based on the swing of the dice, are, are you ready? Are you not going to uh, nerd rage or rage quit because you're like, no joke, I just invested two hours of my life force, literal life force into this game. Tactically, okay, I made some mistakes, but I'm doing pretty well. And, and I rolled some dice and I lost. Now the chaotic neutral in me is like, sign me up. This I, I want to be entertained. I'm like Maximus. I want to be entertained. We'll see what happens. I counter that, and this is kind of the focus leading into it, just like with any war game, any tactical game that involves random, I want to control and influence the random the best that I can. So how do we control and influence the random in Dark Souls? At least try to, I can't say eliminate, but but cut it down a little bit. So the setup begins where you lay out the four tiles, the four dungeon tiles, and you've got your fog gate tile. You're going to declare that. You've got the campfire, the bonfire, and you can kind of orient the tiles with the spawn nodes and, and the facings. There's a little bit of pregame tactica. We're going to push that aside. Then depending on the boss that you're fighting, mini boss, main boss, you're going to draw random cards that have one soul encounters. They're the easiest. Medium souls, two souls, a little bit harder. And a mega soul, three souls, really, really potent and powerful. So essentially, it's a fancy way of saying level one, level two, level three encounters. You place the easier encounters closer to your bonfire and moving out the harder ones. So... Right away, you know that you can set it up so it's easy, easy, hard, really hard. Or, you know, it's level two, level two, level three, level three. You stack the easier encounters. Not that the easiest ones aren't, uh, they're not necessarily auto win. But you want to stack the easier encounters closest to the bonfire. And the reason for that is just straightforward. If you have the greatest chance of defeating those... When you clear a tile, you get two souls. Souls are the currency that you spend for leveling up your stats or purchasing more gear. That gives us some control where I can at least have the greatest chance of getting that gear and, and pushing that forward. So we want to do that. And then branching out. That's not to say I'm, I won't get killed on an easy one. I might get killed on a later one. But we're trying to control that random. I, I don't want to go in on a hard one right away. When you explore a tile for the first time, you flip the card over and you're going to have an encounter. So tactically, what we're looking to do, what we're looking to do, this is a, a 
game of damage mitigation. If I, if I break it down, if there's two hollows and two hollow crossbow, the idea is I look at who can do the most damage, whether it's physical or magic, and rather than attacking the toughest pieces on the board, um, you know, the Silver Knights, the Sentinels, they have a lot of health, they have a lot of armor, they hit really hard. They do. I want to focus on removing models as quickly as I can. So I want to beat on the lower stuff while doing the best to avoid the, the higher, more damaging stuff. The reason for that is even when I get hit uh, Hollow Swordsman, the, the weakest kind of monster in the game, I still could roll poorly. I mean, if I'm all jacked up, all leveled up, yeah, I've got good armor, but beginning game, mid game, the swing of the dice could happen. Now, there is a special ability that you flip. Every character has it, a luck. It allows you to re-roll one dice, or one die, I should say. We're going to use that, but I don't want to use that on tile one, one soul easy. I want to use that, I want to put that off to using it as long as I can. So if I take out the easiest first, not only does that give me more room tactically to move on the game because it's a node-based game, but at the same time, um, it just it just cuts down on the possibility of when I get hit, I'm going to roll really poorly. So I want to thin that out. We get some souls. We're back at the campfire. We've got, if we're playing a two-player game and we clear two tiles, that's eight souls. So I've got eight souls. We're sitting on eight souls in the soul cache. When it comes to buying equipment and leveling up stats... Um, this is the the format that I like to control because the stats, you, you see what they are. You know, level one, level two, level three stats as you bump up. You spend two souls, you get to level two. Then it's four, then it's eight. So it, it multiplies. That's a known factor. I can look and say, you know what? I want to increase this stat. This is what I have to pay. What's not known is the gear. You get gear by opening treasure chests or spending souls when you open a treasure chest, you draw two cards. If you spend a soul, you draw an equipment card from the blacksmith. That deck is big. You know, there's a lot of pieces of gear in there and there's gems in there and there's things to craft and there's slots and there's upgrades. I mean, a lot of fantastic stuff. It's like, you know, Diablo on steroids, but you don't know what you're going to get. And not all items are useful in the ways that you think uh, a lot depends on the monsters you're fighting. A lot depends on the expansions. A lot depends on the boss. So how do I control that random? This is the idea of controlling the random. And I know there's some house rules that implement a shop and a trade. I mean, that that's okay. It's a board game. We can house rule whatever we want. Um, I, I play rules as written just because that's, that's the iteration of the game. If I have eight souls after clearing two tiles, first thing I do is, I draw, if I'm playing two players, because I want to, the gear is shared. You, you, you make a consensus, you buy the gear, and then you say, okay, this will work for you. You take it. Uh, this might work for me when I level up. I'll hold on to it. So I buy two pieces of gear. I spend two souls. I then look and say, can I use the gear immediately? Or am I close enough to leveling up to be able to do it? If I can use it immediately, I equip if I need a little bit of stat bumping, then I'll spend some so spo souls, little tongue twister there, spend some souls to level up the stats, equip the gear. As soon as I have that, then I go back to drawing cards. So I want to do um, a little bit of both. I want to draw two pieces of gear, look at them and assess. Can I use them now? Can I do some upgrades? If I can, I do that. Then I buy two more pieces of gear. Can I upgrade my stats? If not, buy two more pieces of gear. I don't want to outright because there's no taking back. I just don't want to buy eight pieces of gear to find out that, you know, if I spent a little bit of souls, I could have utilized, you know, two or three pieces of that gear, making my next run through the dungeon much easier. So these are some of the ideas to control the random, to control it, to influence it, to make the tactical decisions which Dark Souls is a very tactical node-based game. If I can try to restrain my chaotic neutral nature and control the random of the dice, that combined with excellent positioning on the table, you know, checking the nodes, figuring out where we're going to move, uh, kind of looking at the AI, coming up with a plan, 
that gives you a very good chance to succeed. That gives you, in a dice-based, influence-based game, non-Euro, that's going to give you the best chance that you can possibly have.